everybody. We had some firewood delivered recently, and while most of it is oak, there was a little bit of ash mixed in, and some of it was spalted, so we grabbed a couple of pieces and set them aside, and I decided to put one on the lathe and see what we can do with it. This piece isn't very thick, but I figured it would make a couple of nice little snack bowls, so I cut it into a couple of pieces that are about 7 inches square. I had to use different colored markers for the ring sizes on my center finder because I could never figure out which one I was on. <laughs> so this video is going to have two projects within it basically. I'm going to turn both of these bowls. The first one I'm going to turn the hard way because I don't know why, just because that's what I did. I started this blank between centers and I didn't really need to, but I did put it between centers and that is going to prove slightly problematic here in a minute when I go to try to figure out how I'm going to put a mortise in the bottom of this bowl. At this point, I realized that having this between centers is not going to make it easy to put a mortise in, so I'm going to go ahead and flatten off the face of this and put it on a worm screw, which is what I should have done from the get-go. That would have made this a lot faster, but this is how we did it, so this is what we'll do. And hey look, I finally got my stickers! I've got a drill bit with a stop collar set for the depth of the worm screw, and I just used the center point from the spur drive. I have the lathe going as slowly as it will go, and I'm not pushing it all the way on until it catches. I'm just using the speed of the lathe to start the thread. I have a lot of trouble getting it to start threading. Once I get the blank on the worm screw just a little bit, maybe not even halfway, I turn the lathe off and then finish it and straighten it up by hand. Now then, let's carry on and put a mortise in this. I don't use mortises all that frequently, but this is such a thin blank that I didn't want to lose any depth, so I decided to use a mortise rather than a tenon. I just put a fresh burr on this negative rake scraper with a 600 grit CVN wheel and I'm doing some shear scraping trying to get the surface smooth and free of tear out. Ash is really an open grain wood, a lot like oak, and once it's got a little bit of spalting it really can become very tricky to get a clean cut in it. I didn't think to put a moisture meter in it before I started turning it. I'm not sure how long the firewood has been seasoned. It's definitely not green, but it's not dry either. You'll see that I'm going to get a lot of movement on both of these bowls. Okay. 
I turned both of the bowls in the same day and I was going to sand them, but I decided that I was going to let them sit overnight and dry out just a little bit, which would make the sanding a bit easier. So I turned them both, I set them aside, and then I will sand them right before I finish them the following day. Okay, and for the second bowl, I got smart and did it right the first time and just drilled a hole for the wormwood screw. You can see that this blank is all kinds of wanky, so it didn't really matter. There wasn't any need necessarily to put it between centers, and this just saves me that whole step. I have no idea if there's a way to sharpen the dovetail tool using the CBN wheels or anything, so I have a set of the diamond credit card things, and I'm just going to try to touch the edges up with a 600 grit and put a little bit of a burr on it. Since this is technically a scraper, if I can get a burr going, it should give me a nice sharp cut, and I'm getting a lot of fuzzy stuff in the mortise. decided to shape the bowls differently, so this one's more of a straight-sided V kind of a look, whereas the first one was more of a traditionally curved bowl. For a minute there, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to get that unthreaded.
I'm using my bowl gouge on this one to do the shear scraping. So it's the next day and you can see how oval this bowl has gone. I'm sanding at a pretty slow speed with the lathe, it's only about 280. And I end up having to do an awful lot of it with the lathe off just because I keep missing the spots where it's not hitting on the way around. I sanded to 400 and then I'm using the denatured alcohol to get rid of the extra dusty bits and then I'm using a one pound cut of shellac as a sealer. And once that dried I'm cutting it back with a gray scotch bright pad and then I'm using the Axe abrasive paste. And now I'm going to use Brad's abrasive paste. I've had people ask why I use both abrasive pastes, and I guess the smart aleck answer is because I can. The actual answer is because the Brad's paste is just a little bit finer grit, and I figure you can't have a piece that's too smooth, so applying them is fast and easy. They're both made by small businesses here in the United States, and I think that they're both good products. So I use the Axe first, I follow it up with the Brads, and I'm really happy with the way that they perform in conjunction with each other. For the top coat on this one, I'm using Brad's Tongue Wax. So I'm rubbing in a pretty liberal coat, and then I'll come back in a couple of hours and buff that off. It does make it a little hard to buff the wax when the pieces are oval, but it actually worked out all right. You 
You may notice this bowl is a bit thinner than it was when we finished with it. I had to go back and take that little OG I put in down near the foot off, which meant I had to turn the inside and the outside. I got lucky and it didn't do any real damage. I did have one crack along one of the spalt lines that I filled in with some black Starbon CA glue and then I re-sanded it and we'll do that up to 400 as well. And then we're going to do the same process that I did with the first bowl as far as the uh, denatured alcohol and then shellac and then the abrasive sanding pastes. I'm going to use a different top coat on this bowl. There's not nearly as much vibration on this bowl, since it hasn't had as much time to warp. For the top coat on this one, I'm going to use the Axe Polish and Restoring Paste. And there we have it. Firewood to a couple of nice little snack bowls. I have a few more pieces that are more wedge shaped and I think I'm going to try a couple of hollow forms out of those. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button for me. And leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about this firewood project we just did. I've got some pretty cool projects lined up for you guys, including a collaboration with another YouTube woodturner. So stay tuned for that. Until then, y'all be safe out there. I think these little snack bowls would be perfect for peanuts or gluten-free pretzels or other such things. It comes in pints. I'm getting one.